today on Live Your Faith. If when he was dating you, if he had said, I love you so much, I love you, I love you. He said, but I'm having trouble. What, baby? I love Jane, too. <laughs> and I just can't make up my mind. In other words, his eye ain't single. He ain't clear yet. What would have been your response? Uh-uh. No, this ain't gonna work, right? Uh, I actually think the response probably would have been a little bit stronger than that, right? <laughs> We're going to read here, praise God, verse 32 and verse 33. The Lord Jesus is speaking, if you have a red-lettered edition. And Jesus said, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. So we're ministering today on the subject of getting things added to you. Hallelujah. Now what you have here in Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 6, and Matthew chapter 7, this is the famous Sermon on the Mount. Amen. Boy, the Sermon on the Mount is chock full of stuff. I mean, what the Lord Jesus had to say, the things he began to teach them, blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Amen. Talked about what you do when folk do stuff. Hallelujah. And many other things that Jesus talked about, the principles, all it was, the Sermon on the Mount was the principles of the kingdom of heaven. And it would take me, I'd have to be here for three months to teach just chapters five, six, and seven. I mean, there's so much in it, praise God. So we're just going to look at what Jesus had to say in the middle of it, praise the Lord, in the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 6. Now, the, the, Jesus says a number of things. First of all, the first couple of verses talks about what you do with your, with your giving to the poor. And what he says there is that, now, if you do this so that people could say you're a good guy and give you accolades, he said you have your reward. He goes down further, and he says, and if, and if you pray in public, and you pray in such a way so that people can see and hear you and say, this is a spiritual individual. He said, well, you have your reward. Then he goes on further in the same chapter, and he says, now, if you fast, and then you disfigure your face and look like, you know, you fast, and you, so people can say, oh, how spiritual are they suffering for God? He said, you have your reward. But then he goes on to say, but if you do things from the, for the, uh, or from the right motive, for the right reason, not to be seen a man, but rather to do things for God, it said there repeatedly in this chapter, that there is an open reward that the Father gives you. In other words, there is a reward that will be able to be seen by men on earth, praise God, experienced by you on earth when you do things with the right motive. He also says in this chapter, in chapter 6, he said, and you have to walk in forgiveness. He said, if you won't forgive men, neither will your father forgive you if you don't forgive. I don't know about you. I still need forgiveness every so often. Anybody here? <laughs> Praise God. Well, he said, you got to do that too. And then he makes twice in this chapter, he makes a statement. He, he's talking about things and about when you pray concerning things. And he says, now your heavenly father knoweth that you have need of all these things. And I know when you, when you first read that, you think, well, if he knows I need these things, so why don't he do something about that? Right? Well, I'm going to answer that. There, there's a reason for that, praise God, in the name of Jesus. But before we get there, hallelujah, we're going to pick up, we're going to begin reading verse 19. One more thing before we begin reading verse 19. All of the teachings of the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 5, 6, and 7, even though it's in the, what's called the New Testament, is actually in the last days of the Old Testament. 
Amen. Jesus hasn't died yet. He hasn't been risen from the dead yet. His blood hasn't been shed yet. Praise God. So it's really the last days of the Old Testament, but Jesus is talking about the Father. Talking about the Father's love, the Father's care, praise God, the Father's principles, and everything that Jesus did, he did as a result of the Father. Remember what Jesus said in St. John, chapter 14, chapter 8, chapter 5, other places. Jesus said, I don't speak my own words. I only speak the words the Father tells me. I don't do any actions. I only do the actions only that which the Father instructs me. He said, I'm, when I leave, I'm sending the Holy Spirit in John 16, 13. And he said, the Holy Spirit would not speak his own words either. But that the Holy Spirit would only speak the words that the Father tells him to say to, say to you. In other words, it's still about the Father. Praise God. Even today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. So he's teaching us then about the Father and the Father's love and the Father's care. And we'll begin reading. This is in red. We call this the hot sauce, the good stuff here. Jesus said in verse 19 then. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Well, what's he referring to? He's talking about here an individual putting all of their trust in the systems of the world. Amen. And people just trying to accumulate with the systems of this world. And if you haven't learned but now, praise God, you should have learned by now, in 2008 was a wake-up call, and there's more coming to that kind of stuff. It was a wake-up call. What happened? People found out what their 401Ks did for them and what their 403Bs did for them and found out what their housing values changed rad radically downward, amen, and all kind of things happened. That wealth, trillion, $12 trillion was, lo last, was lost overnight in September of 2008, overnight. Overnight, your house became 30% less valuable. Remember that? Okay. Remember what, what happened to all that stuff you had in stocks and their value? So from so on. In other words, what he's saying is, moth and rust, dub corrupt is, that if what you do is only operating the world system and the world's way after the flesh where things are concerned, understand it can be here today and poof, gone tomorrow. Then he says in the very next verse, praise God, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. In other words, praise God, something that is done from the spiritual side will not be diminished by what's happening in the natural. Shout amen, somebody. Amen. And so that you know that he's still talking about that, you read verse 21, for where your treasure, the word for means because, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's the principle that you need to write down and never forget and take this principle to the bank. Because if you really want to see where anyone on earth heart is, all you have to do is follow what they do with their money. And that will tell you where their heart really is. It's like, woman, I mean, that, that man telling you, I love you, baby, I love you. I love you, baby, I'm so in love with you, baby. And all that, I love you, baby, love you, baby, love you, baby stuff, but he don't want to give you no money. He don't love you. No, it's like those people saying, well, you know, especially guys, saying, well, I mean, I don't know why we got to get, get married. It's only a sheet of paper, okay? It's just a sheet of paper. I mean, I mean, we're, we're in love. It don't matter. No, let me tell you something. That sheet of paper is all about treasure because the moment this ring come on, amen, let me tell you what happens. She automatically qualifies for half of your treasure. Minimum, she automatically qualifies for minimum of 50% of your trash. You better believe that paper means something, baby. Huh? Now, he hadn't changed subjects. He's still talking about, praise God, treasure. Amen. 
Keep reading what he says. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. You know the New Testament is translated from the Greeks, it's translated from Greek. And the word there, single, is the word actually today in English, clear. He says, if your eye be clear, if you have clear vision, then your body is full of light. What is he talking about? He's talking about knowing where your commitment is. Not being a mingled seed. What do you mean by mingled? Well, elsewhere, the question was asked in the scripture, in the book of James, it said a man of two minds, James chapter 1, it said that a man with two minds or double-minded is unstable in all his ways. Right? Praise God. Stand up. Your wife, too. Now, if this, turn around and face people. Let them see how good looking y'all are. They've been around here a long time. Amen. I was there pastor, not Pastor Andres, their pastor. Praise God. So they get, they get the best of the Butler household. They got the two men. Got all right. All right. All right. Now, now, let me tell you something. If when he was dating you, if he had said, I love you so much, I love you, I love you, he said, but I'm having trouble. What, baby? I love Jane, too. <laughs> And I just can't make up my mind. In other words, his eye ain't single. <laughs> he ain't clear yet. What would have been your response? Uh-uh. No, this ain't going to work, right? Uh, I actually think the response probably would have been a little bit stronger than that, right? <laughs> it would have been stronger than that. Would it probably would have been, praise God, something like get out. Or at least at a minimum, you're going to make up your mind right now. At a minimum, right? Thank you. Mm -hmm. See, so he's talking about here commitment. He's talking about commitment where your treasure is. Because he didn't change subjects. Now the next verse says, Amen. If your eye be unclear, praise God. See, this word here, evil, means diseased. Right? Like a cataract is a disease. What does a cataract do? A cataract makes your vision cloudy, comes over, right? Makes it cloudy or diseased. He said, well, if your eye be diseased, then your whole body should be full of darkness. And if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? So he's saying, once again, an individual that is not clear, then that individual then doesn't have the benefit of the finality of the light. Everything in light requires making, or life rather, excuse me, requires making a commitment. Amen? Requires a commitment. You got to make a commitment to it. Then go. Got to make up your mind. Get clear about it. Because if you don't have a commitment, anything can move you. Now, if y'all get with me, I'm going to teach this morning. Okay. But y'all got to get with me or else I'm up. I don't know, I already talked to the earlier session. They got with me, so I don't know about y'all. Can I get three hallelujahs? Hallelujah! 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 Praise God. No man can serve two masters. He's still not talking about something else. Same issue. No man can serve two masters. Either he will either hate the one and love the other. No middle ground. or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is things. He didn't say you can't serve God with mammon. His problem is not that you have mammon. His problem is which one's going to dominate. Follow? Amen. You can't serve God and mammon. You got to either serve God or you serve mammon. He goes on to say, therefore, because all I said, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and your body than clothes? 
Look at the files of the air. They don't have a job. They don't get a paycheck. They don't gather into savings account. Yet your heavenly father, and every time you see the word father, and when you read the Sermon on the Mount, you need to circle it, underline it, or highlight it, or whatever you do, put a star by it, or whatever you do. Your heavenly father feed of them. Aren't you much better than they? Ask your neighbor, do you think that you are better than a pigeon? Did they say yes? Or did they say nothing? Look at another neighbor. Say this to your neighbor. I know that I'm better than a pigeon. How many of y'all know that? Well, God said, look, he said, they don't have a job, they don't get a paycheck, and they don't have a 401k. He go, keeps on reading, keep on reading. He said, uh, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to a statue? In other words, you think you can grow by worrying about stuff? He said in verse 28, praise God, and why? Why? He said, why you do this? Why take ye thought for clothes? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil on it. They don't work. They don't spend. I say unto you, even Solomon, all his glory was not as beautiful as one of these. Well, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, in other words, it is not everlasting. But you are everlasting. Amen. Amen. Right? If God, if God then, Clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow's cast in the oven. Shall he not much more clothe you of you of little faith? That you're going to be around forever. You're God's apple of his eye. So why are you worrying about it? You must have little trust in me. Keep reading, or in the Father. Therefore, take no thought by saying, don't be caught saying this. Because as soon as you open your mouth and say something, it becomes yours. You know Satan has access to your thought life, you know. Just like God does. God can put a thought in your mind, praise God, be his. Satan can put one there too, it'd be his. It may not be yours. But whichever one's going to become yours is the one you open your mouth and speak. So he said, take no thought by saying, what we going to eat, what we going to drink, what we shall be clothed. And Jesus says, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father know it that you have need of all these things. What things? Eat, drink, clothes, staple of life stuff, right? Sufficient to the day itself, the evil thereof. Now, praise God. Why do we see, because you'll see in the same chapter twice, the Father says, uh, Jesus says it's about the Father. He already knows. And we think, well, we already know. Why don't you do something about it? Because it is a two-sided transaction. You and God have to operate as partners. In other places in the scripture, it says you are a partner with God specifically. Hallelujah. Amen. So then you notice verse 33. But seek ye first. That's after God knows you need this. He already knows it. He didn't find it out when you started praying and saying, Lord, I can't pay my light bill. He didn't find that out then. Amen. Amen. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his, not it, his. So now he's, he, they call that what a personal pronoun, I think. I forgot I've been out of college for decades. <laughs> I forgot. Well, anyway, but his righteousness and all these things shall be added. Now, he then gave two instructions that had to take place before the things added, even though the Father knows you have need. So then now we're looking at our part versus. His part. One thing I can tell you about God's part, you ain't got to be concerned about him holding up his end. Shout amen, somebody. 
So if there's any problem with things not being added, must be our part somewhere. So stop blaming God. All right, so let's break this down then and let's find out then what our part is. Seek his righteousness. The New Testament is translated from the Greek and the Greek word for righteousness is diakosune. That's the word for equity. Equity, the Webster's Dictionary will tell you equity means what? Justification. It means or refers to someone that's going to make sure that justice is done. Amen? Praise God. Why? Because many times in life, also if you've not found this out, sometimes it looks like the people who are not obeying God, not obeying the word of God, not following what God said, and it looks like they're the one prospering. And it looks like sometimes those who, those who are struggling and having to deal with, deal with stuff and don't seem to have things working for them are those who are doing what God said. And what, what Jesus is telling you is you have to first seek his right standing. Understand his equity. Know that his name, one of his Old Testament names of the Father is, is that he's the God who makes things right. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, even though I spend more time now in the South than I do here in the North, I'm still a Detroiter. And so, praise God, if the Tigers come to town, or the Lions come to town, or the Pistons come to town, or the Red Wings come to town, if I'm in town, I put on my Detroit gear and I go to the game. In fact, the Tigers were there about three, four weeks ago, and I'm sitting there behind the Tiger dugout. Amen, Amen with my Detroit stuff on, Amen. representing. Hello, somebody. Amen. Well, you know, in the middle of that game, the Tigers weren't looking too good. You know, you get around the fourth or fifth inning, and they, they didn't seem like they were winning. They weren't looking too good. But how many of you know that five innings is not the duration of the game? It's a nine or nine inning game. And indeed, even there can be overtime. Well, it ain't look too good in the middle of five innings. But praise God, by the end of the day, when the ninth inning came around, the Tigers won that game. In fact, they swept the whole series. Amen. You have to understand this about life. You cannot make a judgment in the fifth inning. It's what Jesus is saying. You cannot make a judgment because right now in the fifth inning, it doesn't look like things are just, may not look like things are right, may not look like things are equitable. The game is not over. You are still here, and this game is not over with, and he said this is what you must seek, the justice of the Lord. Which means what? Understand who he is and what he said, praise God. He is the Father. He knows you have need, and he is the God who makes things right. Shout amen. amen. Glory to God. Now, I skipped the first part of that. Seek ye first the kingdom for a reason. Now, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and. So let's now go down to seek first the kingdom. What about the kingdom of God? What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is God's methodology. The kingdom of God is God's ways of doing things. Amen. So in other words, to put it in plain speech, he said, your heavenly father knoweth you have need of all these things, so go to what the Father's Word says and find out what your part is and then do that part. Amen. There are three things in the kingdom of God you must do, three basic principles. Principle number one about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God requires faith. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35, and other places, it says, the just, those who have been declared righteous, shall live by faith. 
The Greek word for faith is pistis. We live by trust and confidence and our belief and our insurance in the Father like Jesus did. Those who have declared righteous live by faith. Faith requires certain things. Amen. Turn to Mark, the 11th chapter. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. Now, in Mark, the 11th chapter, the Lord Jesus is speaking again. And Jesus says, praise God, Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what? Things soever ye desire, when, when ye pray, or the moment you pray, believe that you receive, and you shall have. The them is in the two thems is in italicis. Okay, amen. It was added. They were trying to render the clarity. I don't need the clarity. I know what he's saying. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So he said what? He said faith operates this way when you pray to the Father. He said believe you got it when you pray and then you'll get it. Sound like double talk. Believe you got it and then you get it. But he said as far as you're concerned, you have to believe that you have it. Faith takes it. Faith habits, has it. Faith thanks God for it. Praise God. Say I got it. I got it. Say I take it. Faith has it. Faith takes it. Okay, amen. amen. You only have to believe when you don't have it in your hand yet. You have to believe that you took it when you pray. But you don't have any evidence. Your evidence is the word that was told. Okay. For example, I now hold in my possession this Bible I've had for, this Bible was given to me by Kenneth Hagin Sr., 1994. He gave it to me. Of course, and I'm still preaching from it. Of course, uh, it's been rebound multiple times. Uh, and it's got tape holding, there even verses missing in it. Amen, but I know what the verses say. That's how bad it is. But, but, I, but I, re, I refuse to put it down. Praise God. Isn't the word good? If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to make sure that you know him and that you find him in your life today. All you have to do is pray with me right now. That's right. Bow your heads. Pray with me right now. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I do believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God that he died for me on the cross, is risen from the dead, and is the Lord and Savior. And that's all it takes. Right now, he's coming to your heart, and he saved you now. We want to give you some material that will help you with your new walk with Christ. It's called, Where Do We Go From Here? And our announcers, I'll tell you more about it in the name of Jesus. The Word of God entered your spirit as you just received Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, the real you. Your spirit was born again. That means that you're now a new creation in Christ, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. This process started an immediate change in your mind and body. However, to continue this process of change, you must put away your old habits and learn how to walk in your new life with God by starting your day with the Father in prayer. Just a simple prayer of praise and thanksgiving helps to build your fellowship with God. Thank Him for its love, confidence, patience, loving kindness, peace, healing power, safety from all dangers, mercy, wisdom, and guidance for this day. Be sure to take the time to read the Word of God daily. Just like your natural body needs food, your spirit man needs to be fed the Word of God. Also, please write to the address on your screen so we can send you this very important booklet called, Where Do I Go From Here? It contains a wealth of information that you will need now that you've decided to ask the Lord into your heart and continue your walk with God. Finally, it's important that you also take the time to find a church home and have fellowship with other full-time gospel believers. Our prayer for you is that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Well, this is Keith Butler reminding you to have a wonderful day and always remember to fight the good fight of faith.